Hi, welcome to Ethereal Mechanics video number 48. My name is Robert Justinti. I'm an electrical engineer with 30 years experience. This video is a spin-off video of video number 47 where we gleaned that nature goes out of its way to conserve ether and ether is the fuel of matter. And because of that you could almost make a reasonable argument that there has to be a purpose to the universe and that is what this, this document, this video is. This is more conjecture than anything else, but it's an interesting uh, video. Again, in video number 47, it was demonstrated that the forces of nature drive matter toward lower ether consumption. While this knowledge will help us unlock the nature of ether and pretons in later video, it hints at a possible purpose. And the following is not an irrefutable argument, but it is a compelling one. And we're going to introduce a new character. We're going to use the car from National Lampoon's Family Vacation that's going to serve as a metaphor for the universe with Mother Nature at the gas, at the wheel, and with a full tank of ether. And where is she taking us? And there's a little effigy of the Earth on the luggage rack. Well, if it's Mother Nature's purpose to burn ether, why not just burn it? I mean, just set it on fire. Why conserve it? And if the other purpose of Mother Nature is to conserve ether, then why buy the car at all? Why buy the universe? Why? Why put the universe in motion if your objective is just to conserve ether? All right, well, this says that there is a deliberate consumption of ether, with, but trying to keep the consumption at a reasonably low speed. Okay, so what's the purpose? Are we just the unlucky passengers to the end purpose of the universe? Well, if there is an end purpose to the universe, why not just get there now? So therefore, we have to conclude that perhaps the universe itself, the trip that we're on, must be the purpose. So what are we left with? The universe is purposefully consuming ether with the intent to conserve. It's not unreasonable to conclude that there is a purpose to the universe. Okay, this is kind of run on, I know, but you get the idea. So what else can we glean? Well, with the incredible number of galaxies, each with incredible number of stars, then this is kind of like a large parallel experiment, like over here where they're trying to find uh, uh, these particles. I forgot what they are. Terions? I forgot what the heck they were. Um, I'm a little sick, so my brain is not functioning as full capacity right now. Um, they're trying to find a very, you know, a very rare particle. So they have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of detectors to increase the probability that they'll actually detect one. Okay, so that looks like what the universe is doing with thousands of uh, billions upon billions of galaxies, each with billions upon billions of stars. <laughs> Thus, we have maximum parallelism and maximum duration, consuming with the intent to conserve. So it seems like the universe was designed to provide a maximum probability that some event will occur. Uh, but does it have to do, uh, uh, but not only an event, but a low probability event. That's the key. It's looking for a low probability event. And does it have something to do with life? Well, it's interesting because life seems to be the only thing pushing back against the forces of nature. I mean, the physics, the f forces of the physics part of nature. DNA uses the sun's energy to arrange what would be random matter into highly structured DNA molecules. And the structures of trees fight against the force of gravity to build up when gravity tends to break, um, like rocks and other structures, down to the sea. Humans build devices using sun from the energy to make rocket fuel and to uh, using other things that were derived from sun energy, sun like coal, to, to smelt iron or whatever to make rockets that go against the force of gravity. And because of the rocks that we got, we find that life seems to be very common in the universe. Okay, but it just can't be life itself. Judging by the massive parallelism and extreme duration experiment, the desired event must have a very low probability of occurrence, if at all. So life is too much, too common even in this solar system for life itself to be the thing that the universe is looking for. And most life is not much more evolved than rocks. I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but you know, rocks consume ether and they just exist. 
most life forms consume food and reproduce and that's be that's as far as their DNA will carry them as far as their capability at least that I'm aware of okay what's the rarest thing to occur to life on earth and that would be the evolution of sentient life. Creatures that desire to know more about the purpose of their existence and the purpose of the universe beyond just eating and reproducing. Well, at least, at least part of the human race anyway. Okay, consider that living things... Ev consider that a living things evolved the ability to fly hundreds of millions of years before they evolved the ability to understand the mechanics of flight. So... You know, it's not something that they're going to evolve to do. It's something that they're going to evolve the capability to do. That's what it seems to be. Okay, so the evolution of sentient life is the rarest occurrence on the planet, but that's not it. Because according to the Drake equation, sentient life should abound in the universe. So the answer can't be sentient life. The answer must be something that sentient life is going to do, like I just stated previously. So what is this highly improbable thing that sentient life must do? Well, in my opinion, surviving itself seems to be the thing we're going to have the most difficulty with. So what are we left with? It seems like the most improbable thing, in my opinion, right now, is to have a human race that would learn how to harness the awesome power of nature without exterminating ourselves in the process, either by accident, complacency, or war. Complacency, I mean... You know, we're sitting here developing our theories of the universe without looking into space to see all the asteroids that are coming to annihilate us. Okay, you know, we have to be active on all fronts in order to make that. So it looks like everything is against us, any species, evolving to the point where they could use such awesome power without annihilating themselves. <laughs> okay, with keys to unlock the limitless bounties of the universe, would men still find reason to wage war? This is one of those breathtaking pictures by Robert McCall. Uh, I, give, I just recommend you go online, look up his work in higher detail. It's wonderful. Uh, the previous is logical, but by the previous discussion we had is logical, but by no means a final answer. The final answer could be that there is no purpose to the universe. We have to be honest as ourselves with scientists. Perhaps more hints will avail themselves as the ethereal mechanics progresses. Thank you very much.